Hello, big team. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lizzie Phelan's Books. I'm Elizabeth. And of course, I've got another book haul for you today. And this will be the long awaited cozy mystery book haul. And as you can see, I have my cat of the day once again. This is Harry. I started out introducing a cat in each one of these videos. It's a six video series. And since this is my second video of the day, Harry is still my cat of the day. Although <laughs> he wants down. But uh, anyway, um, I'm going to make him stay for just a couple more seconds. So in today's video, I have 40 mysteries to show you. 39 of them are cozy mysteries. One of them I'm just going to go ahead and throw in. It is basically a mystery-ish, and I should have shown it in episode one, but I forgot to because I read it earlier this month, so it was in a different stack. We'll get to that uh, when we get to that. So... I think I have read already three of the books uh, out of the 40, and quite a few of them are from a series that I've already started reading, at least several of them are, and almost all of them are from series that I'm collecting, some of which I have not started reading, and there may be a couple near the end that I don't even know if I'm going to read or not. They just sort of came into my hands and I'm going to show them to you. I may turn around and resell them, trade them in at the used bookstore. I don't know. We shall see. So quite a few of the books are Annie's. Now, if you're not familiar with Annie's, mostly they are hardcover books. They have ribbon bookmarks in them like this. The original series was just called Annie's Attic, and there are maybe 24 of them, 24 or 25, something like that, maybe even a little bit more. I got these initially because they looked so much like the guidepost books that I thought maybe they were, and then the more I've learned about them, the more I've discovered that they are not. Uh, Annie's is a, uh, it, it's his own company. It's its own company, <laughs> and they do publish, I think, primarily Cozy Mysteries. I don't think that they are Christian-based. I could be wrong. I have yet to read a single one. I think my sister has read some of them. She has read the Annie's Quilted Mysteries, and I did not find any of those this summer. But I did find five of a uh, an Amish I think it's the Amish Inn Mystery Series, and I actually already showed those in my Amish Fiction uh, book haul that I did yesterday, but I'll show you those again in case you don't want to sift through all the Amish romances and everything and you want to see the mysteries. I'll go ahead and show you those today as well. But I did find three books or four books from the original Annie's Attic mystery series that I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I don't have these. I have a uh, my books cataloged electronically on my Kindle, but it's not always completely up to date because there was, um, I got these at a half price sale at a fairly local, not my hometown, but the, a town, a couple towns over that has a library book store. And they have, I think once every couple of months, they do uh, half off everything in the store. So I found, I believe I found all of these at that store. They're regular $3. So I got them for $1.50 and they did have one that I know for sure I have, and it wasn't listed in my Kindle. So I had not cataloged it, but I know for sure that I have it. So it's very possible that I've picked up a duplicate here or there, but hopefully not. And um, anyway, let me just show you what I got. This is book 14, The Stolen Canvas by Marlene Chase. Now the first many of these books were something in the attic, something in the attic, you know, a doll in the attic, a metal in the attic, lady in the attic, uh, just something in the attic. And that's because they are set in a manor type house. And there, I think, is a creepy old attic, or at least an attic with lots of treasures. So um, the first several of these books had something to do with things that were found in the attic. And then I guess they have branched out into other you know, other mysteries outside of the attic. And uh, this is one of them, book 14. The next one is that I have is book 20, The Legend of Fuller's Island. So that doesn't seem to have anything to do with an attic. Jan Fields is the author. She, I think, wrote the first one, and she has written quite a few books in, um, in the various Annie series. This is book 22, A Spicy Secret, D. Savannah George. And then 
Number 26. Oh, so we have gone back to the attic now. Angels in the attic. I, I would have sworn this was one of the earlier ones. Mary O'Donnell. I may have this one. In fact, I looked at it twice and I thought, don't I have this one? But it's number 26 and I don't think I had anything um, that was, you know, past like 13 or 14. So I don't know. Anyway, I am excited to have these. Again, I have not started reading any of these. And then I already mentioned the Amish. It's the Amish in Mysteries. I got five of those. I accidentally got a duplicate of book two because I bought these in two different places. But as I mentioned in my Amish video, I will possibly do a giveaway of the duplicate for Amish in April next year. Especially if I can find a duplicate copy of book one, which is Secrets of the Amish Diary. Um, I would hate to give book two and not give book one, but I'm also selling on eBay now. So uh, if there's any resale value, I might just go ahead and sell the second one. So I already showed it to you, Plain Deception. It's by Tara Randall. The first book is by Rachel Phillips. And then um, I mentioned Jan Fields. She wrote book three, Simple Lies. And this one obviously is a Christmas themed book. And then this one may be the same author as the first book, but it's got an initial, which could mean that she wanted to distinguish herself from Rachel Phillips, who wrote the first book. But it's such a big coincidence. Anyway, Rachel O. Phillips is book four, the author of book four, Murder Simply Played. And then book five, Must Have a Wedding, involved to love and to vanish. <laughs> um, yeah, and there's the Amish buggy there. So I have the first five of these. And then the, um, and I haven't looked to see how many there are in that series, the Mysteries Unra Annie's Mysteries Unraveled series, as well as the Annie's Quilted Mysteries, all have uh, 12 books in their series. And I think I only have a couple of the Quilted Mysteries still to find. But these are Annie's Mysteries Unraveled, which I believe are a crochet mystery series. This is book nine, A Model Mystery. And the reason I think they're crochet is because right here is a crochet hook. So that would be a, a hint. And then these are the last two in the series, 11 and 12. Book number 11 is Double Cross Crochet. So there's another clue that it's crochet themed. And it is by Marlene Chase. Did I tell you the author of this one? Elizabeth Penny is the author of A Model Mystery. And then the very last one, Finished Off, that's an appropriate title, and it's by Jan Fields, who, as I said earlier, has written quite a bit for the Annie's company, or the Annie's publisher. And so that is all of the Annie's books that I have. I didn't find any uh, any guidepost books this um, this summer, at, at least as far as guideposts, cozy mysteries. I think I did perhaps buy one or two Tales from Grace Chapel Inn, but I think I've already shown those in a haul, so it must have been really early in the summer. Uh, and I also bought a couple of duplicates, which I sent to a woman back in my hometown who was reading that series. So anyway, um, a couple of others from series that I've already started reading. I have books 21 and 22 from the Aunt Dimity series. I believe Aunt Dimity and the Buried Treasure is 21. Yes. So I have books one through 20 and I had book, uh, I have book 23. So now I have filled in the gap with book 21, Buried Treasure and 22, The Widow's Curse. And then book 24, I do not have. And book 25 is due out in 2022. So there's really only one more that I don't have. I have read up through book Five or six. I don't know. Donna, if you're watching, you probably could tell me <laughs> where I am in that series. Um, Donna from Studio in the Library had wanted to buddy read some with me. And then uh, I think she finally just gave up on me. I, we might have read one together. And then she just kept on going. She didn't wait for me. And I'm glad you didn't wait for me. Because for some reason, I am just pokey about getting these read. And it's, I know it has to do with the fact that I can't find uh, any of the earlier ones on audio. Some of the later ones are on audio, but I need to read the ones in print up to that point. And then I think I forgot to write down. No, I didn't. Um, here is one from the Large Child's Cackleberry Club Mysteries. And this is a beautiful hardcover edition in great, uh, great shape. It's number seven, Egg Drop Dead. I recently, well, this summer, I read a couple of these 
I believe uh, books four and five are mm -hmm. the ones that I just recently read. So I'm not quite to this one, but uh, it's an enjoyable series, and uh, I've had fun reading it so far. And then I went ahead and picked one up. I'm not really collecting these. The only ones of this Maggie Sefton Knitting Mystery series that I own are a few in the later a few of the later ones that I have not read. I was collecting them for my sister, and uh, she has read almost all of them. And then she just, uh, she messaged me a while back. She's like, I think I'm, you know, I'm not going to keep reading those, or at least I'm not going to keep collecting them. So, you know, in other words, don't send me any more, I think is what she meant. So anyway, I found this one, I think, at my library book sale. And I knew it was one that I hadn't read. It's book 14. I think I'm on book 9. And I've got books 9 and 10 and maybe 11 or 12, but um, I went ahead and grabbed this. Knit to be tied. I hesitated to get it because the last two or three I have not enjoyed nearly as much as the earlier books. And I don't know what, I don't know how to explain the change. It's just that the main character started making choices that I didn't like. I feel like she started lying more and just... I don't know. She just was doing some things that were, um, that I, well, let me just say it. She was doing things I didn't approve of. Okay. Let me just say that. Um, and, and you know, that doesn't necessarily mean I can't enjoy the book. I get that. I do. I get that. But I, I don't know. I'm still going to keep reading them. I am, but I'm just not enjoying them as much. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll be a turn and they will get better. All right, here are two that I had never heard of, but because they said mystery on them, I grabbed them. Turns out this is the first in a duology by Ruth Moose, doing it at the Dixie Dew. I think I found this at a thrift store this summer. I might have even shown it in a, um, like a shopping vlog, and I don't know anything about it, but there is one more in the duology, obviously, and uh, it looks cute. It's such a cute cover. This is also a two-book series. You know, I've heard it discussed, you know, do you say a duology and a trilogy if there's just two or three? Well, I think it depends on whether or not you think there's going to be any more. And and this, you know, this is one of those cases. Actually, both of these. There may end up being more, which, you know, right now there's just two. So that would be a duology. But then it may not continue to be a duology. There may be more that get written. I don't know. This is book two in a in a two book series or a duology by Lillian Bell, If the Coffin Fits. I did show this in a uh, thrifting haul or a book shopping vlog. And um, so some of you will remember this maybe. Uh, these are not, uh, my library doesn't have these, but Hoopla has both of them on ebook. So I will be able to read the first one through that. This is a funeral parlor mystery. And, you know, I never really thought about the fact that there are quite a few books that are set in funeral parlors. Uh, even after I read the Spencer Funeral Home Cozy Mystery Series that is written by Janice J. Richardson, I still thought that was pretty unique. And then Janelle from Too Fond of Books does a whole video doing March Mystery Madness listing off all these books that are set in funeral homes or mortuaries. And she said, this is not even all of them. This is just a few. So it, it, apparently it's a more popular topic than I would have thought. And then I have, um, that's most of the hardcovers. I do have one other hardcover that I'll show you with my mass, with my mass markets that, um, they're from the same series. <clears throat> so, I, oh, one of my most exciting finds. I have not started this series because I had all the books in the series except for book one. This is Lie and Wait. This is a soap, um, soap making mystery. And I think the whole series is called Home Crafting. So the second one has to do with home canning, and the third one something else. And uh, each book is about a different type of home crafting, whatever. Um, so, sorry, I just heard a noise. It sounded like the dog just threw himself against the door, and he may very well have. Anyway, it's by Cricket McRae. And this was at my local library book sale. And I was so excited to find it because now I can finish that series, or I can start it. Yeah, I'm excited to start it. Um, then <laughs> I found two more of these books. They're kind of a quilt theme. The actual series is called Harriet Truman Loose Threads Mysteries. They're by Arlene Sacatano. I hope I'm saying that right. And I found three of these at a local, fairly local library bookstore. 
And I, I found three of them in the same store. They were all in different places in the store. So like one was in like newer books and one was in clearance and one was just in the regular fiction section. And I thought, okay, <clears throat> well, maybe these are books one through three. Well, I got home and I looked them up and they were one, three, and five. So the next time I went back to that store, I thought, okay, I'm going to look again. Maybe I'll find two and four. So I got there and I found two books and I was like, yay, this has got to be two and four. Woohoo! Guess what books they are? Seven and nine. <laughs> this one makes sense that it's nine. Uh, disappearing nine patch. <laughs> but book seven, A Quilt in Time. And doesn't this little baby look like our new little baby? <laughs> our little uh, scooter Bigfoot. Uh, um, I'll show him to you again in another video if you haven't seen him. He was in, I think, episode one. And uh, he's asleep right now in Katie's bedroom. Anyway, um... <laughs> So I guess I'm destined to just get the odd books in this series. There are 12 books in the series. How much you want to bet? I will I will find book 11 before I ever find any of the of the even ones. I don't actually bet, but you know, figuratively speaking. All right. Um I got this for free at a thrift store that for some crazy reason have decided they're not going to sell soft cover books anymore or paperbacks. They're just going to sell hardcovers and they don't even have that many of those. It's so disappointing because it was just one of the best places to buy books. And so this was in a giveaway box and this is, um, hold on one second. These books are kind of dusty <laughs> and I had to sneeze. I didn't want to sneeze on camera. Okay. So this is books one through three in the, um, some kind of chocolate series. I forget the name of the series, but it's by Joanna Carl. I have uh, Chocoholic Mysteries. I have book three already, which is the Chocolate Frog Frame Up, but I did not have the Chocolate Cat Caper and the Chocolate Bear Burglary. So now I have all three in these, in this bind up, and so now I don't really have to keep the uh, Frog Frame Up, but I might keep it anyway, just because I like, I kind of like it. It's kind of cute. So then... Um, I said I would save this to the end because this is the one that's not cozy, but I want to go ahead and finish up everything on uh, to, to this side of me. And these are the only um, like trade paperbacks. This is The Wicked City by Beatrice Williams. This is not a cozy mystery. I thought maybe it might be. It's more of a historical mystery. It has two time frames, 1998 and then 1924 or 34. 24, I think. Um, I didn't love this. I did buddy read this with Becca from Hicks Picks Books. Neither of us were super crazy about it. Uh, I do have book two, which I do plan to go ahead and read because I have it. It's there on my shelves. And then I'll probably let them go. Uh, I don't even know if I'll read the third book. If I can get it on audio at the library, then maybe. I think it's just a trilogy and, uh, and I've got two of them now. I already have hauled book two. My friend from, uh, that owns a flea market bookstore. She had read Beatrice Williams before and had read the books and she thought that I might enjoy them and you know they weren't horrible but it just I don't know there's something weird about this it had this kind of a paranormal twist that I wasn't expecting and and it was I don't know it was um I don't know it just it wasn't what I, it, it just wasn't what I was expecting Okay, the, the rest of what's left are mass market paperbacks with the exception of one hardcover and I thought I would save it with this batch because they're all from the same series. Um, I have five new books from the Mr. Monk series. I actually have a mass market paperback of this one and I couldn't decide which one to keep and I still can't decide. <laughs> So I picked up, you know, duplicate accidentally because I have sort of a, com uh, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? I have a mixed collection. I have some mass market paper paperbacks and some hardcover and I can't seem to um, collect all, all or, or the, uh, you know, one or the other. Anyway, um, let's see what number. Let me go in the right order. That's the later one. So this is the one I have, uh, the only one of this batch that I've already read. I've listened to this on audio. Mr. Monk is Miserable. It's book seven. I think I'm up through book eight, eight or nine. And, um, then I'm gonna, that was all I could find on audio. And now I have to read the rest in print. So I'm glad that I found some more. Um, this is number 10. Mr. Monk is cleaned out. Number 11, Mr. Monk on the road. 
And number 12, Mr. Monk on the couch. And then this is book 14, Mr. Monk is a mess. So these are all by Lee Goldberg. Hi Conrad did write the last four or five of them, and I've only got one of those, but I do have, I think, all of the Lee Goldberg books now, maybe. Actually, I didn't go back and check. They're all on my shelf in there. And then the next series I'm actually reading right now, I bought these on eBay. These, uh, This is the series that we are reading right now for the Killing Time with Cozies book club. And I want to apologize to them because a lot of times I have been saying Killing It with Cozies, and that's not the name of it. It's Killing Time with Cozies. And uh, we are reading this five book series right now. We started in... August with the first book, Hummus and Homicide. I went ahead and listened to this one on audio because that was the only one that was available on audio, but I bought all three of these as one lot on eBay, and I think I paid like $12, um, and that might have even included shipping, maybe 12 and some change. So not a bad deal, and uh, I'm glad that I, that I got these first three. So book two I am currently reading right now. I actually took this on the plane with me, and I read several chapters, Stabbed in the Baklava. Now, we have already discussed this one. Uh, I didn't get to watch that discussion. because Well, I didn't watch it on purpose, really, because I hadn't read it yet. And so I got to get on the ball and finish this one because... By middle of October, we are going to be discussing book three, One Feta in the Grave. And I want to be on time for that discussion, uh, uh, you know, next time. Then there's two more books, and I am looking at possibly buying those on eBay as well. But I haven't checked my used bookstores lately to see if they have them. They are on Hoopla on eBook. But if I've got to read an ebook, I'd rather just get the physical copy. I'm not super crazy about reading ebooks. I'll do it if that's the only way I can get it. Um, and my library does not have physical copies of any of them. The only physical copy they had was the first book on CD. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, uh, but I, I really enjoyed the first book. I kind of gathered from uh, a few other discussions from that group that a lot of people didn't really love the second one, but I think most of us are going to keep reading and, you know, keep going because you never know. Series can can roller coaster. They can yo-yo. There can be some good books and some that you don't love as much. All right, this is a uh, from a series that I have already started. I've read book one in the novel Idea Mystery series by Lucy Arlington. I own the second book, and this is book four, so I don't own book three, but uh, book four is played by the book. This series is about a woman who, uh, in the first book, becomes a book editor, and uh, it's her story, so it, I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, this next series I have read. The first one I actually bought it on Audible, and I have a few of the books, like the later books in the series, but this is book number two, so that's awesome. I haven't read this one, The Cat, the Professor, and the Poison by Leanne Sweeney. This is from the Cats in Trouble mystery series, and I think, um, several years ago, Courtney when she had her book club with um, Books of My Heart, they read the first one of these for their book club. And that's when I read it. That's when I read the first one. It's been a while back. And this one I've also read the first one of. And I need to reread it because I was looking at it. I was looking back and I only rated it three stars. And I didn't remember not liking it that much. So I can't remember what I didn't like about it. I mean, in three stars, it's still kind of middle of the road. You know, it is middle of the road. So it doesn't mean you hate it. But um, for me to rate it three stars, there was something definitely about it that I didn't like. Anyway, this is book three, which I'm pretty sure, according to my Kindle, I did not have. I do have several books in this uh, Bibliophile Mystery series, but I did not have book three, The Lies That Bind. So this is about a book restorer, and that is such an interesting field. I, th I just think that's uh, really neat to read about. This is a series I've been collecting. I have quite a few of these already. I have not started reading the series. It's by Lorna Barrett. Uh, it's the Booktown Mysteries, and I did not write the number. Oh, yes, I did. Number six. This is number six, Murder on the Half Shelf. That's cute. Oh, I've got Harry locked in these uh, two rooms, and he wants out. Um, number 13, A Killer Edition. So I don't know anything about these, but I've heard good things. I think uh, Melinda from Two Boys Scrappin' said that she's read some of these and enjoyed them. And this is another series I've been collecting, and I didn't have this one, and I haven't started reading them. This is number four in the Candy Holiday Mystery Series by B.B. Haywood, Town in a Pumpkin Bash. 
Looks appropriate for fall, doesn't it? I, but I haven't read the first three, so I'm not going to read that this fall. Uh, this is a series I have not read or started. I only have the first one, um, but it's kind of sewing related. And it's from the Threadville Mystery Series by Janet Bolin, Threaded for Trouble. And like I said, I've only got the first one. This is book two, so that looks like a fun series. And then these last two, I don't know if I'll read these or not. Now, I do have at least one book from a different series by Krista Davis. And I think someone asked me, it might have been Fiona from Reads and Eats, asked me if I had read any of this one. And at this time, I don't really have any plans to start her other series. I kind of like to read the, the pet one first. Uh, this is number nine also. Um... The Diva Steals a Chocolate Kiss, and it's from the, uh, um, what is it from? The name of the series. Domestic Diva. Yeah, I was right. Okay, so Domestic Diva series, and um, I don't know. This was, I think, at my my local, my, my local library book sale. Fill a bag for a dollar. They were getting ready to, you know, just like everything that didn't get taken was going away and I thought you know what let me just grab it um I might read it I might put it in my TBR jar or something like that I don't even know if that those are on audio on Hoopla or anything like that this I bought kind of accidentally because I thought that I recognized this cover and I thought this was from a series that I was already collecting it turns out it just kind of has a similar look it's not even the same author of what, of what I was thinking of and this is the um it's from the Dead End Job Mystery Series by Elaine is it Vietz, Vets? Uh, Clubbed to Death. It's book number seven, so it's farther down in the series. I'll, I'll see if they want this at the local um, at the bookstore where I can trade in for credit. I don't know. My battery's running low, and I'm probably running out of uh, space, too, on this phone. So let me just sign off there and... Um, before I go, let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books or any of these series or if you want to buddy read any of these series or if you just are interested in reading them. We don't have to buddy read them. If <laughs> I don't want to impugn that on anyone, but uh, I do enjoy buddy reads. Uh, I just um, sometimes I'm better at it than others. I'll just put it this way. Uh, anyway, I am excited about this haul and thank you so much for watching and staying to the end. And I hope you will come back tomorrow for my middle grade book haul. And that will wrap up this book haul series of all the books I bought this summer or acquired this summer, except for the Christmas books, I'm saving those. And um, there was something else I was going to say, and I already forgot what it was. Oh, if you didn't see any of my other videos, episode one was just the miscellaneous and nonfiction and whatnot. Uh, then I did one on vintage romances and Amish um Amish themed, not necessarily romance, not necessarily Christian, just Amish themed. And then I did do a video, which I uploaded this morning on Christian fiction. So I hope you will watch those if you haven't, uh, if you're interested at all and come back tomorrow. And then day after tomorrow will be the first of the month. And that will be time to do my end of the month, um, you know, reading wrap up. It's not going to be as many books this month as uh, in the previous months. But that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.